The Trefoil Talks, celebrating 30 years of women of distinction. Hello, my name is Mary Pat King, and I'm the CEO of Girl Scouts of West Central Florida. Welcome to our Women of Distinction Trefoil Talks, a reimagining of our annual Women of Distinction event that honors its 30-year history. These live panel discussions will feature past Women of Distinction honorees and other notable women in our community. They'll be giving advice for young women who are making decisions about their future, continuing our goal of connecting today's women leaders with the future women leaders we are building at Girl Scouts. We are able to further our mission of building girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place because of your generosity, which is needed now more than ever. If you find this program to be valuable, please consider making a donation by visiting gswcf.org backslash WOD. And we hope you will. And now, the Women of Distinction Trefoil Talks. Hello everyone, my name is Lindsay and I'm here with our first ever Trefoil Talk Spotlight. I'm here with Miss Yvonne Fry with Friday Productions. Yvonne, do you wanna tell us a little bit about who you are and what the company, about your company? Sure, hi Lindsay. First of all, it is such an honor. Um, we're gonna hear more about what we've been up to, but I am tickled to be with you tonight and with our audience. Um, Friday Productions is a um, boutique marketing communications company and we are thrilled to be the media partner for these series, the year-long series of Trefoil Talk. So thanks for um, the welcome and for hosting us tonight. Thank you for being here. It's very exciting. So a month ago, we started a process for our year-long Trefoil Talks, mm -hmm. and you and I hosted together. Um, I had a lot of fun that night. How about I you? I did too, 100%. Yes. yes. And we heard from some amazing women. You want to tell us a little bit about your impressions from that night? Yeah, I really enjoyed everything I heard about. I thought it was really inspiring just to hear these success stories with all of their challenges. It's, you hear about all these different success stories, people reaching the top, and I think it was really interesting to hear the vulnerable parts of that and just know about the challenges and struggles that came with it. I thought it was really inspiring. Yes, and each one of those women are just powerful in all that they've accomplished, but it's nice to see that it hasn't always been an easy road. And um, and they had some good tips and ideas and things for um, younger our younger Girl Scouts and younger professional women um, to tap into. And we really appreciated them lending their voices, their stories, their wisdom and experiences and so on for the first of our Trefoil Talks on, focused on CEOs. So can we talk about Girl Scouts though for a few minutes? Yeah, of course. <laughs> You're a Girl Scout. I am a Girl Scout. Um, I've been in Girl Scout since I was in kindergarten. I started right out as a daisy and I've been going up ever since. And you are officially a what now? Um, I'm a year two, a year one ambassador. Um, so that's the final level of Girl Scouts when you're a junior or senior in high school. So you're almost ready to finish high school. What are some of your interests um, in school and, and maybe beyond? I really don't know about anything beyond, still kind of everything's up in the air. Definitely interested in possibly going into some sort of production, but at school I've been involved with a lot of different theater, singing, chorus, and stuff like that, and I'm also, a, I swim too. And you're very accomplished, very articulate, amazing. I've, I've just enjoyed so much getting to work alongside of you. I have a lot of respect for your talent. Um, and the reason that you're engaged the way that you are to host and co-host with me is um, you are in the Media Girls program. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so the Media Girls program is basically a team of about 30, 35 girls who are the representatives for the voice of the girls in the Girl Scouts of West Central Florida. So whenever um, anybody's going to talk to the media, do press about Girl Scouts, people wanna see the girls' perspective, so that's where we come in and we talk about our own personal experiences with Girl Scouts and just sort of advocate for the things that Girl Scouts can give due to girls. You are a tremendous ambassador. To have 30-fold of those, wow, that's a powerful force. So it's a I am a great group of girls. Yes, I can tell. How has being involved in that program influenced you and some of the things you're interested in for your future career? It's influenced me a lot. I never really thought about the whole idea of production of the behind-the-scenes things until joining the Media Girls. 
um, when I was in middle school, kind of going to those new sets and doing photo shoots, it was really interesting just how everything was able to work. And it's fun too. Yeah, it is fun. It's so fun. It's kind of fun to play dress up sometimes, get to perform and all that. But I think it's really just shown me that there's a future in that. And it's also been a great way to develop just people skills, how to talk to people and just how to articulate your ideas better. Well, and something that you believe in and that has impacted your life so much to be able to be an ambassador and, and share that with other people, whether that's other girls or um, adults that might be donors or volunteers or what have you, I'm sure that's very rewarding and will lead you to a lot of other success in life. Your role as a media girl, here we are, we hosted, you saw our production company in play. We did a tech run through the week before, worked with our panelists, with my team, and then we did the live stream and had a lot of fun with the online audience. What did you learn or what did, what were your takeaways that were new or interesting to you? Um, one takeaway that was kind of new was just about kind of the way people were just able to work through the bumps in the road. It was really interesting, especially with everything being on Zoom. So much is online. I mean, our live stream was over Zoom, obviously, but it was just really cool to see how people were able to adapt to the new changes and just get through it. Yeah. Well, and that's, I always say with people, and with technology, you're always going to have some challenges, and it's how you work through those that really define the culture and, and reflect you, who you are, and your character, and, and what's important. And um, I'm proud of my team, but I'm, I'm glad that we could share that with you because problems always come up. Yeah. You just got to count on that. So um, trying to be as prepared as possible with things is always important, and then being able to deal with the, the challenges, that's all part of it. So yay. Yeah, very See, exciting. Real life experiences, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about, isn't it? I do have a, a really pressing question. Um, Cookies. Yes. Let's start first of all with the important things. What's mm -hmm. your favorite? 100% Thin Mints. There's a reason they're a bestseller. They're my personal favorite and I think they're the best ones. They are. I like them in the freezer. Yep. <laughs> that's the best way to do it. We should do a poll, you know, online that's, you yes. know, making sure that everybody understands that that's prior to just making some hard data. If you're not collection. eating them right, if you're not, yes. put them in the freezer. There you go. Not at all. Selling cookies. When you started, your, you were in kindergarten when you mm -hmm. started? Kindergarten, first grade, we started selling cookies. At first you do it where your parents are with you, you know, you, a lot of times you start out doing cookie booths where, you know, you sit up in front of Walmart, you ask people if they want to buy cookies, and eventually it goes into more completely independent. We run our own booths now, our parents aren't there or anything like that. So it's been really cool just to go through the motions from being, you know, having your hand held to being able to do this, this little business all on your own. That is so cool. And I would say for me, I have such respect for Girl Scouts and what it means and its impact, but the entrepreneurial experience that it offers every single girl to me as a, a female entrepreneur is so important. I think that there's so many things that keep girls from their full capacity in that realm and this is just an easy way to walk it out and see that they really can do it. Um, I have an expression that nothing happens until you sell something. Um, and in, in, you know, in for-profit businesses, that's what you got to do in order for other jobs, you know, to be able to be, to exist and so on. So I'd love that. Um, do you like selling? I really like selling, actually. I used to just kind of think of it as just, oh, something to do. But over the years, I've kind of realized how many skills you develop just by doing it. And it took me a while to see that. But I think it's really interesting just to be able to get to talk to people. And you feel really good after if you're able to sell all your cookies. You get to talk to people, give them something they clearly want. People always want cookies. Yeah. So, I mean, at school, sometimes we'll fill up our trunk with cookies and just stand out and be like, who wants some? Take some. And it's just really nice to be able to talk to people, get involved in your community. and give people something they want. Yeah, and you touched on something that's so important. A lot of people think selling is, is has a negative connotation. And you said the key word that I always clue in on, which is giving them something that they want or need. And it, being able to really discover that and, and provide solutions, provide something that's, that's enjoyable or helpful or what have you, that's what selling is all about. It's not about manipulating people, it's really truly about delivering something that improves their life, gives them something that they need or enjoy. And, you, you nailed that because that's what that's all about. It's, yeah. it's not something that's negative. It's really a positive thing or you know, both sides win. So that's, that's very exciting. I actually wanted to ask you, how did you wind up on the entrepreneurial path? Was it, did you always have it in mind to start your own business or what was that journey like for you? I appreciate you asking that. I, my parents were farmers. Um, which is the ultimate entrepreneur experience. Mm -hmm. um, there's a yeah. lot of risk involving weather, involving a lot of other things. And I grew up um, in that environment. And I also am a huge risk taker. And so I, and, and, and I think probably my strongest driving force for me personally, in addition to the, you know, that seeing it and getting to experience that, 
um, and embracing risk is that I, I want the buck to stop here. I really want to take responsibility for the results, the engagement, what we deliver, and I, it's hard for me to step back and, and give that to somebody else when I know inside me what burns, you know, of, of the desire that I have to really deliver results, um, a great relationship, you know, all of that. I just, that was what to me was the ultimate decider. And, and from a very early age, I, I embraced the entrepreneurism spirit and set out. And I will tell you, I was a single mom. I was pregnant with my son, who's 22 now. And I knew what I wanted for quality of life. And part of that comes from being able to make your own hours. And I wanted to be able to be able to make him a priority and figure that out. And that meant working really hard and putting mommy days on the calendar that we could carve out. And that was a piece of it too that was that deciding factor that like now's the time. You've got to step up and figure that out and make the decisions that are going to define your life and your kids' lives. Yeah. So that was all a, a piece of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's The perfect storm. Wow. Here we yeah. are. <laughs> And I actually want to ask about the name, okay. Fried Egg Production. I was wondering where that came from. I know your last name is Fry, but yes. how did you get to Fried Egg and all that? Well, um, there's two aspects of that. And I, I love telling this story because it, it really embodies who we are as a marketing company. So the, first of all, the egg. If you've seen our egg, it's like I call it a brain tattoo. Um, it's embedded in there. And, and it's so the visual piece of what we do is marketing memorable items that you know really you attach to. The second piece of that is the name which has a story behind it which is we're storytellers. That's what we do in marketing. Throughout time people have connected through stories if you think about history. So our story is of course as you mentioned my, my you know, fried egg is spelled wrong because it has my name F-R-Y in it. But I grew up on a chicken farm we picked eggs every day, 60,000 chickens laid eggs every day. So by hand, that was before automation. And um, my, the name of my company is really a tip of my hat and, and a grounding where I come from, which is about hard work, it's about faith, family, you know, those, those values and remembering my humble beginnings and what it takes to be successful and what really matters in life and what doesn't and um, keeping me grounded. I get to work on some amazing projects like this and this little farm girl pinches herself every day and says, I get to work on this with these people. And I just get giddy and I am excited because I am committed to staying grounded in that and, and keeping that, that heart of being marveling at the blessings and the opportunities that I have. It is really exciting. We are really committed to community building, which, you know, our, our partnership with Girl Scout, that's a big part of what we do. And we do a lot of nonprofit work as well as for-profit and government and other things. But all of that has a thread of community building. So that's our story. Yeah. And, and it's, it's fun. And a big part of what we do is helping other organizations tell their story in a meaningful way that connects with audiences. Yeah, I so think here we are. I think it's really inspiring you're able to stay so humble and still like be in a position like this and be able to reflect back on where you came from. I think that's something to really take to heart. I appreciate that. It, it, is, it is just a marvel, like I said, every day what we get to do. And, and I get to meet people like you. Yeah, yeah. It's very exciting. I'm, I'm, glad I'm happy a, to meet you. Yeah, me too. And we, I mean, I think we make a pretty fun, amazing, pretty dynamic team. Yeah, team. yeah that was, um, I, I say so myself. I mean, I think maybe there's a future here of like, podcast or yes. something else I mean walk this on something out over there yeah you never know you never know what's around the next corner so yeah but thank you for um, hosting me thank you so much yes we had fun then and now and we're gonna do some more things in the future one more thing I want to ask you about because I always am amazed at the projects that y'all do you're working on your top level tell us a little bit about that Yes, yeah, so I'm currently working on my Girl Scout Gold Award, which is basically the equivalent of an Eagle Scout for Girl Scouts. And so the whole goal is that you pick a topic, you see an issue in your community, and you work out to do your part to resolve it. So my issue was a lack of education about environmental issues among younger people, because I think, you know, the next generation, the environment and the world is in our hands. And if you're not teaching kids, the younger the better, to teach them why we should care about the planet and how we can care about the planet so that we're setting ourselves up for success for years to come. So I've been doing a lot of outreach, giving different presentations to my old elementary school, to kids in my high school, middle school, stuff like that. And doing different, I've been helping a Girl Scout troop of, I, they're all about eight or nine, get their environmental explorer badge. So that's been really exciting just to 
see them learn along the way, but it's been a really cool process. That is awesome. How has it been with trying to educate your peers and engage them? I bet that was probably the most challenging part. Yeah, it's definitely a little difficult trying to get people engaged with it, but I think once you kind of go over why it's so important to care about the planet, obviously with all the climate issues, climate crisis happening right now, people sort of get to, people get a little more interested once they understand why they need to care and why this is so important and how it will affect our futures. That is so cool. I, I have a lot of mixed expressions, things that I can go back to, and one of the things of the thing of what I'm involved with is encouraging myself and others to always stay grounded in your why. And if people don't understand the why, again, you touched on like just the heart of, of how to be effective in that. If you, if you don't understand the why, you never buy in. So you are, I'm sure, delivering a great impact with your work on that. When will you finish that? When does that wrap up? Um, I'm thinking I'm going to be wrapped up by the end of this school year, right around the beginning of summer. So that's exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. That's exciting. I want to know all about the celebration on that. And the, yeah, so that's, that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, um, we have another event coming up, um, another live stream in June. Tell us a little bit about that. What's, what do we expect next? Yeah, so our next topic is going to be on civics for our next Trekwell Talk. It's going to be on June 2nd. And again, just like Yvonne said, it's going to be another live stream. And we've got several elected officials locally that will um, be hosting um, for that one. And we're excited and hope that everybody can join us. And look forward to that on June 2nd, 7.30 on our Facebook here and, and YouTube. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Hello, I'm Laura Webb, President of Girl Scouts of West Central Florida's Board of Directors. Thank you for joining us for our Women of Distinction Trefoil Talk. I hope you found it insightful. I wanna give a special thanks to our sponsors, including Fried Egg Productions and Premier Eye Care for their generous support of this project, as well as so many others. And thank you to everyone watching for your belief in girl possibilities through your support and participation with Girl Scouts of West Central Florida. We provide life-changing opportunities for thousands of girls and young women in our community, but we couldn't do it without you. You can still go to gswcf.org backslash WOD to make a contribution. Thank you again. We hope to see you at our next Trefoil Talk and in person at our 30th anniversary event on March 18th, 2022.